You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis, and I'm alongside David Eckert from the Clarion Ledger today for, I guess, the last true practice report of spring. You get that honor, David. Wow. I'm I'm just, I'm so humbled, Stephen. You know, I'm, uh, it's, it's a big moment in everybody's life whenever they get to sure. do stuff, something like this. Absolutely. Words defy me. I don't know what to say. Yeah, yeah it's, it's absolutely nuts. Um, anyway, you got to see a little bit of real football today. And from what I heard, if my DMs are any indication, you got some backup quarterbacks going at it, some nice passes being thrown, not sure. a lot of scoring, but it yeah. was something to see. Yeah, it looked like um, I couldn't tell exactly what it was, but it looked like some red zone type type work or maybe extended red zone type stuff. And yeah, so we did get to see some actual football. Um, no Jackson Dart, but some Walker Howard and some Austin Simmons. So got to learn a little bit from that, um, which I'll take, you know, that's a win. Yeah, I've, I've talked about this spring and all this spring that a Cold War has started. And nobody's talking about that because this is the first year under Lane Kiffin where there hasn't been some sort of a quarterback competition since Jackson Dart's been here. Mm-hmm. But the backup job with Austin Simmons and Walker Howard, that's kind of a Cold War because this time next year, that is going to be the only story. Yeah, I I think Lane probably needs to be asked who the backup quarterback is at some point. And maybe I'll do that Saturday because he hasn't been explicitly asked this spring. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's yeah. Um, uh, we, we, we saw Walker throwing um, both had some nice, some nice throws. Um, and, and it seemed like uh, Walker was on the field against the first team defense. Um, so obviously that's a little bit of a challenge, um, you know, c- compared to the second team unit, which so, um, but yeah, so both some splashy throws, uh, Simmons had one back shoulder fade, which is everybody's favorite red zone play. Um, but, but just looked really good. I think, I think the receiver was out of bounds when he caught it, but I was like, wow, like flashy, flashy play. But I do think you're right. I think that's an important storyline. Um, and I kind of wrote in my, I, I did like a, like what I'm watching at the Grove Bowl because, um, you know, besides hot dogs. And um, <laughs> and that was one because, you know, we, we, we can get uh, some insight into where those guys stand because I, I don't know if that's super clear. And I think I'm probably not allowed to say it, even if it is. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, I think Saturday should be insightful um, for that. Yeah, and there's not a lot that um, people are going to be able to take out of Friday because they're going to or Saturday, and they're going to be having fun and all of that stuff. But one of the things that you can probably take some stuff out of is Austin Simmons, Walker Howard, and processing information because they are essentially playing seven on seven. Yeah, I mean, look it, for for the quarterbacks, um, you you can get a feel uh, in, in this format. And the other thing too, and and this was another thing that I wrote about is. This is kind of the quintessential receivers against DBs format too, you know? So um, I'm interested to see how uh, Ole Miss's transfer DBs handle that receiver room. I, I, I don't know how full strength that 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 receiver group is going to be um, on Saturday and, and, and who they're comfortable doing what. But um, I think that's another place where we can get some insight too is, hey, you know, how does this new group, you know, Trey Amos, Brandon Turnage kind of kind of stack up against guys who we know are studs, like like, you know, your Trey Harris is of the world. Are is Trey Amos on the other team than Trey Harris? That's a great question. I don't yeah, know the if they, if, if they didn't do that, that feels like a missed opportunity, right? Yeah. Here we can answer that right now. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I don't, I don't, I don't have that in front of me, but I mean, they, they promoted that literally all spring. Oh, see, I was thinking, all right, Lane put out the staff assignments. He did not put out the roster. All right. So we still don't know the answer to that question. 
No, the roster is out. Let me let me is look it? that up. Yeah, it, it's out. Let me see if I can find it real quick because I saw it before I got on here with you. Now I see uh, it. Here we go. This is great podcasting, right here. Yeah, this I'm serious. Great. This 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 top shelf is kind of, it's kind of like um the podcast games. <laughs> okay, so they are on different teams. We are okay. Get good. That. Good. Yep. That is yep, a yep. matchup that everybody needed to see happening because they promoted that way too much. <laughs> uh, not, 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 that, but I mean, for them not yeah. to do it in the grow ball sure. where everybody can see it. Sure. And, and it's kind of cool because, you know, those guys are both uh, from a similar part of Louisiana too. Like they've, they've got some history. I, I was trying to figure out whether they played against each other in high school. They, I, did, not. they um, did not. I think okay. they asked, they either asked Trey Harris or Trey Amos that, and he said they didn't. Okay. So yeah, it's, um, you know, that's cool. There's a little bit of history to, to their relationship and it'll be a good matchup. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that everybody gets to see it. All right. Whenever we come back, thanks for watching the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. When we come back, we will talk about the Grow Bowl games. We'll be talking about the fall football season and what we can look forward to going into football and a little bit of transfer portal. I think we'll talk about that as well. But right now, I do want to let you know that it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. One of the things you can bet on is Ole Miss and their odds to make the 2024 college football playoff. Currently, a yes payout is minus 122, which is about 54% probability of that happening. I thought that was interesting, but that's not all. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, it's America's number one sports book. Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the game time app usually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. So they, with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and the lowest price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I'm going to the Detroit Tampa Bay game in about a week um, to check out my beloved Tigers. And one of the things I'm interested in is where I was going to sit in that game because I am a sucker for a sweet left-handed swing. Like Riley Green, I am all about seeing that. So they have seat views, and you can panoramically check it out, and you know you can pick out the perfect spot to see what you want to see. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E, for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Are you watching Fox News or Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV and you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting and screaming? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube, programmed for you with the biggest stories of every day without all of that screaming. Locked On Sports today. Brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every single day. So, David, we talked about what you were looking to get out of the Grove Bowl games. Um, What is your realistic expectations of what you're going to see? Almost nothing. Um, (laughs) Which, look. Um, I'm okay with, right? Like, I, I think if you're an Ole Miss fan, um, you should be happy about the way that Lane Kiffin is handling this. I think it is in the best interest of the Ole Miss football program to just kind of make this some fun vibes instead of serious football. Um, for a few reasons. One, um, you know, the transfer portal is opening on Monday. Do you want to have a nationally streamed, you know, broadcast of all of your players and where they stand and what the depth chart looks like two days before that happens? I don't know if that's a good idea. Probably not. Um, Two, like, they've just made it fun. 
I, I don't I don't know what you think, Stephen, but mm. I said this actually on, on a radio hit that I just did. I think for me, the spring game is traditionally my least favorite day of the year doing this job because it's just mm. stale. You're watching like with all respect, you know, 30 minutes of the spring game is going to be walk-ons who are never going to see, see the mm. field. The stadium's like three quarters empty by halftime at most places. So, you know, they've they've made it fun. They've injected some energy, and, and that matters. Again, transfer portal opens on Monday, you know, projecting a positive, fun vibe for the recruits that are going to be there is, is, is important. So I think they're handling it well. Um, but as far as, like, football takeaways, I don't know. Probably nothing. Like I said, maybe – some DBs and receivers and quarterback stuff, but you know, very, very watered down. I think I've done a good job this week of taking every perspective and every side on this um, Grove Ball Games thing. For the fans, like the members of the Grove Collective that actually are contributing money, I do think they have the right to see what they're paying for um, in this, yeah, yeah in, the, in this era of college football. So I th- do think that. The Ole Miss putting together a Grove Collective Meet the Rebels after the game, that okay, that that's a good thing. But that was after my take on Tuesday. I do think the transfer portal is a big deal. And if you look at Lane Kiffin, he retweeted like something from Josh Pate mm-hmm. talking talking about how crazy this portal cycle was going to be. That's the real thing. Now, anybody that comes at me with in- injuries, like they, they sit here and talk about spring games like it's the first 10 minutes of saving private Ryan. No, I don't have time for that. <laughs> and, and, and I understand if you enjoy it. I understand that if you're trying to beat the transfer portal window, that that is the best argument for what's going on this weekend is the transfer portal. And Lane Kiffin is obviously very concerned about that portal window. And obviously, you know, Ole Miss is one of the most talented rosters in college football. You want to protect that for the next 15 days. I, I get that one entirely. And I'm just proud that Ole Miss figured out a way to take care of the collective because I am going to honestly be a voice for those fans when nobody else is a voice for those fans because they're the ones that's financially invested right now. And sometimes people can lose track of that. Yeah. No, look, I I, I get it. Um I think it's ridiculous that they have to be financially invested. Oh, yeah, that's, that's another story altogether. Uh, yeah, it's a whole different conversation. Uh, but yeah, no, I I agree. I think they are handling this as well as they possibly can. And I, you know, I, I would say so if I thought otherwise. But um, yeah. you know, what, is the answer to this essentially getting rid of the spring transfer portal window? M- maybe. Um, or, you know, again, like have documentation that makes makes players stay in a particular place. Yes, you know, contract. Like, yeah, contracts uh, would, would do it. Yeah, and, and, you know, but like I think if you're asking yourself, like is protecting the sanctity of spring games across the country, you know, a force that's going to propel that change to call? I think probably not, but – um I think some other things might, something has to happen, right? We cannot continue on this yeah. road of like sheer chaos all the time. What I want to see happen, and it probably won't, if the spring, this Grow Bowl games things takes off, my dream is gone. And what I want to see happen is those stupid FCS games, they become spring mm, games. Yeah, I would love that. And that was, yeah. um, who was pushing for? Was it Hugh Freeze that was pushing? Yeah, for I that? think so. Yeah, yeah. that makes yeah. all the sense in the world. But if you get away from playing football in the spring, all of a sudden that gets further and further away. And yeah. now that silly Furman game in the fall, when nobody wants to see Ole Miss play Furman to start the season, <laughs> that that is the game that's sitting right there. That game should be tomorrow or Saturday, as opposed to on August thirty first or whenever the date is. Yeah, I listen. Sign me up for that. The mm. the less meaningless football I have to watch, Stephen, mm. the better. You know, mm. if if we can increase the quality of football that is before my eyes, I am never going to argue with that. So I'm yeah. I'm, yeah. But the know, the, the answer always seems to be whenever people make changes to the sport, it, the answer is less football, and I I don't understand that of ways they can make it 
more efficient and better football, but it, it, it seems like stuff gets taken away. It's like, hey, we're going to cut seven minutes out of the game and fill them up with commercials. You know, <laughs> Less football, but more money, Stephen. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, it, it's it's ridiculous um but I, like i said i understand exactly why they're doing it under the transfer portal is absolutely the most amazing argument that anybody should have everybody should be arguing whenever they're trying to justify what's going on that is should be the argument speaking of the transfer portal there's been like three or four running backs that Ole Miss uh, that has popped up in the transfer portal that we're hearing about you have Henry Parrish, who's been crystal ball to Ole Miss, and uh, you know everything that I've heard, it, he's going to get in and potentially go that way. But we've heard Damian Martinez from Oregon State; mm -hmm. he's a top five running back in the country. And I had Brian Smith, the locked on recruiting expert, say that he would literally take him head for head over Quinshawn. And I've never watched him, so I don't know. But yeah, he's a two hundred and thirty two yeah. pound back that can play it yeah, he is very good at what he does the question becomes he was he's walking away from four hundred thousand dollars which we know that number at oregon state because of pete thamel so that means it's probably going to take close to seven figures to sign this guy <laughs> and and my question is is like it's not an unending amount of money but this is a guy that could Ole Miss has a national championship roster with that guy on the roster. I don't. I. I don't know. Again, it's it's. So he, here, here's what Lane Giffen is going to do, right? And he's going to assess the value of him and and whatever because he wants a running back. He kind of. I've asked him about it. He's like, yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to attack the running back in the transfer portal. Um, he's going to assess the value of what he has um monetarily and il monetarily and he, he's gonna compare that to what it's gonna take and to get these guys in the portal and he's gonna i think try it which is what he does he's explained this to us to bring in the guys who make sense value wise for Ole Miss. so you know it, it, it's it's going to depend on what the ask is it's going to depend on what Ole Miss is value um estimation is of these guys it's going to depend on whether or not they're interested in coming here you know mm. so um i don't know we'll see um but i do think there's going to be a, a, a new running back in that room probably a proven one and it's probably just a matter of who it is or if there's more than one we'll see yeah do you think that lane kiffin's about to do the running back room what he did to the quarterback room a year ago maybe it would give us something to talk about. Like, mm -hmm. there's a real lack of like controversy when it comes to like this depth chart. You know, don't, uh, don't say that. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm used to the quarterback competitions. <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, it's it's like I'm out there. I'm watching practice, and I'm like, I feel like I know where most of these guys stand, and I feel like it's kind of cut and dry. Um, not everywhere, but at, but at a lot of places. So. Um, I don't know. It's it feels a little quiet, you know. Let's get some juices flowing. Let's get some takes, you know. Let's do it. Yeah, I, I think this fall, um, whenever they start practice, wherever it is, the last week of July, the first week of August, I, I I think that we're going to be able to tell a different energy around Ole Miss football, and you're going to see, for lack of a better word, Lane Kiffin's going to pucker up a little bit. Um, be because it's going to get real whenever you start doing that. So it's going to be very pressure filled with everything they do. And I talked to Jake Crane, um, from Crane and company, um, that's going to release this weekend. And I said, the main thing that Lane Kiffin is going to have to deal with is these kids handling these expectations because yeah. this, this Ole Miss fan base is expecting the playoff this year. Yeah. And, and depending on the running backs they bring in, we might be expecting more than that. And that that's a big deal for a program that hasn't traditionally been there. Yeah. Yeah. No, you nailed it. It's um, the, to me, all of the questions about this team are mental questions, right? Does the chemistry fit? Are they going to be able to handle the pressure? 
are the guys who are not getting the snaps that they hoped they would going to be fine with that? Is there going to be buy-in? So, you know, last year, and, and this is not my interpretation. They've said this, right? All of those things went right for Ole Miss last year. And that's, or, or most of those things. Um, and that's why they had a big reason why they had the season that they had. Um, in 2022, a lot of those things did not go well and they collapsed, you know? So, you know, I, I think they're, they're in a good spot talent wise, but they have to get these questions, right? They just do, you know, you, you don't with their schedule. And I know it's easy relative to the rest of the, of the SEC, but generally speaking, large scale, like it's a difficult schedule. So, you know, you, you don't go through that schedule and lose f- two or fewer games without having some of those team components, without getting the chemistry right, without buy-in widespread, right? Like, I'm sorry, you're not going to, to LSU and winning a game unless you've got a team instead of a collection of players. You're just not. So um, we'll see. Yeah. It's going to be um, it's going to be interesting. I think the last time that Ole Miss won in Baton Rouge and the last time they won in Fayetteville was in 2008. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, it's, you know, it's that discussion, like the schedule discussion to me, it just, I have a hard time agreeing with a lot of it. And I don't know if we've talked about this or not, but it's just like, these are difficult places to go win football games, guys. And, and you're just kind of like writing it down in pencil as a win and, you know, and, Obviously, Ole Miss is better on paper than a lot of these teams, but there are there are booby traps on that schedule, man. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's not simple, easy, you know, um, easier SEC schedule than we're used to. Sure. Mm-hmm. Easy schedule, period. I don't think so. No. Yeah. Two times in the last 10 years, Ole Miss has went down to Baton Rouge 7-0. and They've lost both times. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and look, you, you got to. If you're getting into the playoff, you probably got to – got to win those maybe, games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you got to you gotta win 10 games, maybe nine, probably 10. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there's – there's you, you can't slip up on those banana peels, man. Um, you can't do it. So, we'll if, see. If, if I'm not mistaken, the Arkansas game, by the way, you play Oklahoma, Arkansas, then Georgia. The, like the Arkansas yeah. game is right before the Georgia yeah. game. Yeah. You know, I, and look like Florida's a mess, mm-hmm. but Gainesville's going not down, easy. going yeah, going down the swamp you know, the is game. yeah. Mm-hmm. South Carolina not great on paper, hard place to win a football game. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's these are still SEC road games, and you can't just say that's a win. In my opinion, yeah. well, well yeah, yeah, and, and but that's the reason, honestly, fans love this. Yeah, I mean, they they, they, they want it to be. They do not want sure things. They want in their mind to know how it ends. I don't know, they, Steven. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise it would be like playing Furman every single week. Right. And nobody shows up to see him play Furman. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. It's mm-hmm. it's gonna be fun one way or the other, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the journey is gonna be fun. We'll see whether or not they like the outcome. All right, this fall, um, is, since since it's probably going to be a couple months before we have you on again after this, this fall, what, what are the main storylines going into football season, into the fall football season? Wow. Um, I think the backup quarterback's really interesting. Um, you know, we know their offensive line is bigger. How much better is it, I think, is is interesting. Um, you know, you look at this, this – uh, the kind of redone secondary that to me is really important. How does that play? You've got these veterans. Can they really, you know, to me, the, the Ole Miss defense, and I guess this is really what I'm trying to say with the secondary is the Ole Miss defense was a unit last year that was punching above their weight. I think quite literally um, physically. And so it was a bunch of really good G5 players. Sure. And, and Mm -hmm. so now, how does inserting, in a lot of cases, elite SEC talent into some of the slots in, in that system that was overperforming, how does that play? What's the end result of that equation, um, I think, is a really interesting question. So a few things to think about for sure, but th- that's where I'm at with a, you know, 
hundred thousand foot view. Yeah, and it won't be long before 101 degree temperatures are in the air and people are out there. Well, I guess I guess Lane Kiffin would probably have them in the indoor on those days, but uh, those practices are going on, and we're sitting here having real discussions of what can happen about the football season. And my goodness, it's it's like four months away, and it feels like it's a year at this point because I'm just I'm just dreading exactly how it's going to be whenever I do the same show like once a month over the next three months about whatever the topic might be. But I mean, that that's the life we've chosen. And, but you know, it, it's hard. It's the middle of June is, is difficult. Yeah. It's the same for me. I'm going to take some vacation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't fill a month of content. I need a week, you know, just to, to spread some stuff out, but yeah, it's challenging. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. David Eckert from the Clarion Ledger. What do you got going on at the Clarion Ledger this week? Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to cover the heck out of the hot dog eating contest, <laughs> otherwise known as the Grove Bowl. And uh, we're going to have a bunch of baseball coverage, too. Big, big baseball weekend to see if uh, Ole Miss can kind of reignite their season here. I think they need two or three. Um, at worst so i think they need a sweep yeah 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 we'll see so big big weekend we'll have we'll have it all covered all right we'll talk to you later man you have a good one sounds good appreciate you steven